Hello everyone, it's Brian in what is about to become a very snowy Toronto. Maybe you can see in the window that it's snowing. We're supposed to get 10 or 15 centimeters. Uh, you can convert it to inches if you want to, whatever. Uh, today I'm going to do a contest entry for Christian who hosts the channel called CGC Vinyl. He's at one year in the vinyl community and has having this contest to mark the occasion. So let me just get to the rules here. I'll put a link below. <clears throat> so you must be subscribed to his channel. You must give the contest video a thumbs up, two thumbs up. You must post a video entry. And the contest revolves around the numbers 365 for 365 days. So the idea is you show three records from one genre, six records from a different genre, and five records from a third genre without repeating bands or artists in, in doing that. And then let them know you've done it. And <clears throat> for you viewers, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a challenge of my end at the challenge of my own at the end and hopefully you can pick out a theme that runs through all of these 14 records from these various genres so we'll see how well you uh, figure that out so my first uh, genre is going to be punk and I've chosen a record from 1977 from a band called the Sex Pistols never mind the bollocks here's the Sex Pistols possibly the most influential punk rock record I mean I know some people might argue with that but for me it certainly was because I never heard anything like it and uh, it made the news I remember watching a broadcast of the news and people were uh, incensed about God save the Queen and I probably was a little bit too but I was pretty young at the time but I think part of me thought it was pretty funny although the the um, safety pins through the cheeks or whatever didn't really appeal to me but anyway this is an early Canadian pressing from the from probably 77 I should double check that in discogs but Band from London, released in 1977. Second band from London, also released in 1977, <clears throat> The Clash. Now, depending on where you live, this record may have a different track listing or track order because it was changed in various places. Now, having said that, I should note that, um, you know, I've lived in Canada all my life, and certainly you could buy import records, but in what, for whatever reason, this is from Holland. I don't know why I have a Holland pressing. I have a later pressing from the 90s of this as well, but this is from Holland. But anyway, the only band that matters London, 1977, and oddly, third record in the punk genre is also from 1977, and also from a band from London, and that's Wire, Pink Flag, of course I love this band. Uh, now, of course, genres cross over and mix and, and whatnot, so you might see this described as post-punk or other terms, but I think it's solidly a punk record. There's a track on here that you maybe know and don't realize is from Wire, and that's the track called Strange, which R.E.M. covered on document. Anyway, this is a great record. Uh, one of my favorite bands. So there's three punk rock records from 1977 from bands from London. So my second genre is going to be hip-hop. Now I don't actually see a lot of hip-hop in the vinyl community. Maybe I'm watching the wrong channels. Um, also rap or hip-hop. Uh, Jason Skills, of course, shows hip-hop. I've seen him do that many times, but I don't see it very frequently. So I'm going to do the six from that genre, I'll start with one that I've shown before in a uh, video I did about bands from Toronto, and that is the Dream Warriors, a band from North Toronto. My definition of a boom jazz style from 1991. As I mentioned in that video, there's a song on here uh, that is their, I guess, marquee song. It's called My Definition of a boom jazz style. And let me just t t tell you a few things about that in case you didn't see my other video. That song is uh, heavily based on samples from Quincy Jones's record, or uh, song Soul Bossa Nova. If you don't know that track, if you've seen Austin Powers, the beginning music for those films is also the same track, Soul Bossa Nova from Quincy Jones. And it's interesting to me that uh, Mike Myers, being from Toronto, and this band being from Toronto, chose that song to sample, and I think it has to do with the fact that there was an old Canadian game show on TV called Definition. So I don't think it's a coincidence that they wrote a song called My Definition of a boom Jazz Style because it clearly dates to that show. That show used Quincy Jones's song in the credits, in the opening and closing. So Canadians, especially in Toronto, if you, or you well, Ontario, around that time, you would have heard that sample. I didn't know it was from Quincy Jones back when that TV show was on and maybe didn't even know it when this record came out in 1991, but it's kind of funny, that weird game show connection. Second is a... Uh, rap hip hop duo from Long Island, Eric B and Rakim. Some people say Rakim, but I've heard that it's actually pronounced Rakim. This is uh, 1987. This is original U.S. first pressing on Fourth and Broadway, and of course the the big track on here is Paid in Full, which I think is phenomenal, and the video is quite cool too. Uh, this is a great. 
I think I might have mentioned this record in a video about money, a record with money on the cover. So, yeah, I did from Static Traveler. There was a, a thread that he had going. So, number two. Number three is from an artist who I didn't realize was from Sweden until many, many years later, and that is Nina Cherry. She was born in Stockholm. Of course, has a big London connection, but she actually is fluent in Swedish. And this is Raw Like Sushi from 1989. It's the back cover. And of course, the big track on here is Buffalo Stance. I think you might have known that where she is. So uh, this is uh, this that song was everywhere in 1989. Buffalo Stance. I think uh, how could you have lived through that year and not known it? But I really like this record. And sure, number four, um, another rap or hip hop duo from Harlem. And this is Broad Bass and DJ Easy Rock. It takes two. Now, I have a funny story about the first time I ever heard that song, but it's kind of too long to tell right now, but maybe someday. There they are. 1982. And, of course, it takes two as a, a sample. Now, I'm going to forget what the... I used to know it off the top of my head. Um, think of, um, Anyway, I don't know. The sample from It Takes Two is from a, well, a, sought, a highly sought-after record, and I, I can't believe I'm forgetting what it is. Anyway, this is a, a really interesting song with an enter entertaining video, if you don't know it. I think there were three singles on this one. Join Pain, Get on the Dance Floor. I have 12-inch singles for these two, but um, that was a very interesting track. And the third one is possibly the most influential gangster rap uh, collective ever, and that is N.W.A., Straight Outta Compton. I mean, it's <laughs> straight out yeah. Blank the Police, uh, Straight Outta Compton, Gangsta, Gangsta. Man, this is uh, Express Yourself. I think you'd know that one. Yeah, this is, a, what do you say, 1988, kind of game-changing, really in-your-face um, social commentary, a really powerful record. Okay, for my last genre, I'm going to choose classic rock, because I, I maybe, maybe don't show enough classic rock, but I have a lot. And so none of these are going to be bizarre or strange or unusual and that's so let's start with the first Led Zeppelin record 1969 Led Zeppelin 1 yeah I'm, I'm a, I have everything on uh, from Zeppelin most of my pressings are from obviously from Canada in the mid 80s so this is a pristine copy from whenever I bought it sometime in the 80s and on just because it's so hard to find your because there's so many of these it's hard to figure out which one you have but I'm pretty sure this is sometime in the mid 80s there's a Led Zeppelin record and then we have Bruce Springsteen, Greetings from Asbury Park. I have everything Springsteen has ever released. Uh, I have a very extensive Springsteen collection. So this, this is probably my, if I were to rank Springsteen records, which I have never done and maybe should, should do, this would be in top five for sure, maybe, maybe higher, maybe, in, maybe higher than top five, but anyway. Uh, I should have said Zeppelin, 1969, this is 1973, third one, I don't make this too long, I'm already at eight minutes, uh, third one, 1968, Creedence Clearwater Revival, yeah, this is a great record too, this is actually an original Canadian pressing from 1968, in actually really good condition, hard to find, usually they're all beat up, CCR records are always beat up, but this one is, sounds amazing, I played it the other day and it still sounds great, number four, this is an original Canadian Black Sabbath. Well, when I say original, I'm not sure if this is 1970 or, or maybe up to 1980, but somewhere in there, uh, the first Black Sabbath record, which is fantastic as well. I mean, this is such a great record. And finally, uh, this is a record that came out in 1967, but this is a, a pressing from 1972, Canadian pressing of the Jimi Hendrix Experience, Are You Experienced? So there we go. So that's, again, what, I mean, Purple Haze, I mean, he's on here. Wind Cries Mary, Foxy Lady, Hey Joe. This is fantastic. Really like this record. Nice, interesting psychedelic photograph on the front. <clears throat> so the question for you is, well, first of all, uh, you should check out uh, Christian's channel and subscribe. I, I subscribed many months ago, and I, I can't remember when exactly, but... Um, so check out his channel. There is a, a kind of a weird thread running through all these 14 records. Let me know what you think it is. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.